say in this first unit. Um, okay, I would say in this first key issue in chapter two, the, probably the most complex thing to understand is this population density. So there's three types of density. I'll talk about two with maps, and that's arithmetic density and then physiological density. And the third I don't have a map for, but it's pretty easy to get. So <clears throat> this arithmetic density issue is basically if you take a look at a global map and you want to measure persons per square kilometer, it'll kind of chunk as a global nature where population clusters are. So if you take a look at some of the other videos I produced on this subject, you can see that Western Europe and Southeast Asia or South Asia are heavily um, clustered. But this kind of gives you a better idea of globally where the hot spots are as far as the amount of people. So if you look at India, for example, it has a high concentration of people per square kilometer. And you also see that in Bangladesh to the east of it. Japan and Tokyo have a huge clustering, and so does London and, and England, Great Britain, and you have the Netherlands. So it's good to know common trends and patterns of where those population clusters are, as I've mentioned before, and then specifically regionally where those concentrations are. So basically arithmetic density is just people per square kilometer. If we go to physiological density, it's a little bit more complex. And so take a look at the map. And you have, let's focus in on two places. So I'll go back and forth between physiological and arithmetic. You see Egypt, which is right here. And you have a very deep green. So essentially this means that Egypt is more dependent on arable land usage to feed its population than, say, the United States. The amount of people that in, in Egypt are that are needing arable farmland is greater than the need of those people in the United States or Canada for the farmland. So this helps us understand maybe potentially the need for imports for food. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the Netherlands again, very dense population, not a lot of farmland, so therefore there's a higher uh, there's there's quite a few more people per square mile of arable farmland. And so economically speaking, when you talk about geography, knowing that countries can't produce farmland, it's going to make them dependent on more importation for that purpose. Okay, and the last would be the agriculture density. And simply that, if you go to page, let's see, I think it's page 49 in your text at the bottom, there's a map. And if you look at that map, the darker areas are some of the areas that... Um, there are more farmers per arable farmland. And those are typically the areas that are in more poverty situations because they have not mechanized their farm labor. So in the United States, for example, does not have a very high agricultural density because we have a lot of machinery that does our work on our farmlands. So we don't have a lot of farmers per uh, hectare of farmland. So that's basically what agriculture density is. Those three terms are important to understand. And especially I would focus in on the maps and what they show you because you want to be able to picture trends and patterns across the world.